What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Dylan from DSL Media, and today I am going to be changing things up a little bit, and I am going to be taking a bit of a break from Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, and I'm going to start Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy. It's Crash Bandicoot! And there is Low Poly Crash. I mean, I don't think that's his actual PlayStation 1 model. I think it's something that well, that Vicarious Visions uh, recreated for this opening. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to be starting a new game on the first Crash Bandicoot. And this, by the way, is the PC version. And I am playing this on the PlayStation 4 controller. Because, you know, I feel that using a PlayStation controller is the best way to play Crash Bandicoot in general. And yeah, I'm going to be overriding the save. I actually was doing some test recordings, but a lot of it didn't come out well. And I kind of had to like mess around with the recording software of capturing PC games. Okay, so now, as soon as this finishes loading, we're starting at the opening. We haven't determined the cause of past failures. <laughs> Moron! This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex Commandos to world domination. This time, I shall reign triumphant. <laughs> We are closer than ever before. Quickly, into the Vortex! <laughs> Dr. Cortex, <laughs> the Vortex is not ready. We have no idea what it could do. <laughs> Maurice Lamars as Dr. Embryo, ladies and gentlemen. Failure again. <laughs> Capture him! And that's one of Crash's very few lines that he had in the original trilogy. Also, I love how they made Tana Bandicoot into a bit into a bit more of a badass than she was in the original version. Because in the original version, she didn't really have that much of a personality. She just was Crash's girlfriend. And also, she didn't really appear past the first game because of complaints that Naughty Dog received from parents that uh, Tana Bandicoot was kind of, um, kind of seemed too close to Pamela Anderson. Um, and that sh they just like, that she seemed like too over-sexualized. But they brought her back recently and they actually gave her more of a personality. And she not only appeared in the remaster in this game, but also in the remaster of Crash Team Racing and she's gonna be in Crash Bandicoot 4. Anyway, so, so I played through the Switch version and the PlayStation 4 version, but I decided to go with the PC version because for doing this Let's Play, mainly because this runs at a very butter smooth frame rate of 60 frames per second. And man, does it look incredible. Yeah, because the other console versions runs this at a locked 30 frames per second. And I think this is a good opportunity to kind of take advantage of the 60 FPS. And I am loving it. Okay, and now to break those boxes. Okay, and I think I just need a few more boxes. Yeah, and let's see, did I collect all the box? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, so 48 out of 49. So that makes just one more box. There we go. And yes, by the way, I plan on doing a full 100% playthrough of this game, or 105%. 
meaning that I'm going to be collecting all the gems, which means that I'm going to be going back to some of the previous levels during this Let's Play as I start collecting some of the color gems. All right, and now on to Jungle Rollers. And I think this is the level, the first level, where you get the uh, Rolling Stones. Spinning TNT is deadly. Yeah, thank you so much, Hintbox, for telling me that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the hint box can be good. Um, it can be useful to have, but also it gives you the really blatant and obvious things that it's like, yeah, thank you for telling me that. I would have never guessed. Now for some skunks. And some of the Venus flytraps. And hey, a Tana token. That's something that we're going to be playing a lot of, is the Tana bonuses. Alright, and three Aku Aku masks makes an invincible Crash and Aku Aku combo. Oh, and I can tell that this is going to be a level I'm going to have to go back to. That is, once I collect one of the color gems. That's going to be quite uh, an experience. Yeah, and is this... Okay, yeah, so an extra life. I mean, I think collecting the extra lives are going to be relatively easy in this game. Yeah, so there's the first Tana bonus, and it should be pretty simple. Yeah, just getting five boxes, and that's that. And an extra life to boot. Yeah, and I like how in this version, she gets kidnapped by Cortex. In the original, she just stands there. She just stands there, you know, looking really nice. And, um, well, that's it. Yeah, like, Tana did not have much of a personality in the original PlayStation version of Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, so missed three boxes. This is definitely a level I'm going to have to go back to. But we'll see how I fare in the next level. All right, on to the Great Gate. Spinning a log platform lets you jump on it. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for telling me that. The uh, hint indicator, whatever you would call it, hint information. Yeah, and of course, I always try to be sure to get as much of the Wampa fruit as I can. Hold X to bounce higher. Yeah, thank you so much for telling me that. And yes, I'm playing this on a PlayStation 4 controller. Again, PS4 controller, any PlayStation controller, that's like the ideal way, the definitive way, in my opinion, of playing Crash Bandicoot. And that's what I'm going to be using throughout the entire trilogy. I mean, when I was playing the Switch version, I mean, it was kind of weird, just like, it felt kind of weird seeing like, using like the Y button to spin and hitting the B button to jump and the X button to um, activate the inventory. It's like, I mean, I mean, the buttons are about the same, but it just like felt kind of surreal. Uh, be just like knowing that I was playing it on a Nintendo controller. And also, and also I even got an 8-Bitdo Super Nintendo controller for my Switch. And it just like, it just felt kind of weird playing a Crash Bandicoot game on a Super Nintendo controller. It was like, what? 
This is one of those mind-blowing things. But either way, I'm. But either way, I still think a PlayStation controller is the best way to play Crash Bandicoot. Because that's how that's how you would play in the original, and it's just what I'm used to. All right, and a few lives. That's good. And watch out for these spike things. I don't know exactly what you call it. Oh, and wonderful. This is another stage where I need to collect another one of the color gems. So I'm going to go back um, later on and collect the remaining eight boxes. But for now, it is on to the next level. And now it's on to boulders. Oh, I think I know which level it is. Break all the boxes in a level to earn a clear gem. Well, thank you so much for telling me that. Not that I didn't already know that before. I mean, it wasn't like I was already starting to collect all the previous boxes. But, I mean, I guess maybe it's good for, um, like, maybe casual players? Beginner players of Crash Bandicoot? Even though I still think most of the um, most of the most of the hints are strikingly obvious, like who cannot figure out that spinning a TNT is going to make you die? Like, wow, really? Who who could who could not have figured that out? Oh, watch out! Don't want to get hit. I mean, I'm sure that the boulders in this level isn't that hard, but you never know. And also, you can't get hit by any of those posts because that can really slow you down. There we go. Got the gem. All the boxes in this level have been collected. All right, on to the next level. Oh, upstream. This is one of those levels that just kind of makes me feel... I would say one of the more nostalgic levels. Yeah, like this is just like one of those levels that I remember from the original Crash Bandicoot. And I'm just like, ah, upstream. This is, this is one of those levels that I just, that I just remember being back home and just remember playing. So I gotta say, the atmosphere to the remastered version doesn't really have the same feeling as um, as in the original PlayStation version. Um, at least more specifically for this level, because I feel like like the music specifically in the original it kind of like had more of a calming feeling. Where here it's like more instrumental. There's like there's like more instruments being used and it just like doesn't really have the same feeling but that may just be me that just may be like kind of my own personal nostalgic feelings over um the original crash bandicoot some people may think differently of course do not want to get eaten by these venus fly traps all right, another Tana bonus. And they fit more boxes from here. There we go, a few extra lives. 
And that is that. Yeah, I mean, just as I said before, I still prefer the music for the original for this level, but that's really just me. I mean, I know that there does exist mods that allow you to change the music, but I do wish that that is also an option that, they, um, that they've given you for, um, for all the other console versions as well. Like, it, like, just, a, like just a regular uh, feature that they give you and not something that fans have to mod into the game. But it, that's really just me. All right, now on to our first boss battle, and that is Papu Papu. Ten body blows don't hurt him. Well, I mean that's useful. Some people, some people may spin at him on the first try, so I mean that's not too obvious of a hint. Still something that one could fi could figure out within like um, within like one turn or so, but. But at least that kind of helps save the process. There we go. Oh dear God! And I really don't like seeing Papu Papu's uh, ass crack. That's just like no. I don't even know if that was in the original Crash Bandicoot, but uh, yeah, that's just one of those things that I just did not want to see. Okay, and now onto Rolling Stones. Unlock a new path by earning the blue gem elsewhere. So in other words, this is not a stage in which I am gonna be able to collect all the boxes right away. This is one that I'm gonna have to go back to once I collect the blue gem. I mean, I am gonna go back and re replay some of these previous levels once I start collecting the color gem, which is going to start later in this Let's Play. Probably not in this video specifically, but in some of the later episodes, that's going to happen. Oh, hey, and this is where you start collecting some of the Embryo face tokens. And those are going to be a bit harder than the Tana bonuses. I mean, maybe the... I mean, I don't think the one in this level is going to be that hard. But they do get, but they do start getting a little bit hard as you go along. So I mean, this is one of those things that I just gotta brace myself for. Yeah, so two Tana tokens and two Embryo tokens. Anything up there? All right, nope. There we go. All right, so now it's on to the Tana bonus. And this shouldn't be hard at all. I don't know about anyone else, but when it comes to uh, these boxes of Wumpa Fruit, I always try to get as much Wumpa Fruit as I can. More Wumpa Fruit, the more lives you'll get. And even when I max out on lives, I still tend to collect a lot of Wumpa Fruit. Yep, this is where I would to get the blue gem. Okay, so now it's on to the Embryo bonus. Let's see if I can do this in one try. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Well, nearly got blown up, but it's all good. 
Got all the boxes and a few lives, so good from there. Yeah, okay, so there we go. Some box, so some boxes that are missing. Yeah, six boxes. These are some of the boxes that I need to collect once I get that blue gem. Okay, well, I mean, onto the hog wild. But first, I almost forgot that um, that after you beat Papu Papu, you can now play as Coco. So I won't be able to play as Coco in this level since this is a level that requires you to play as Crash. Um, but I will play as Coco in the next level. Old jump to bounce higher on drums. That is good to know. Yeah, this is one that I'm probably going to die a little bit on. I mean, this is kind of a fast paced level and a pretty easy one to die. Okay, oh, and watch out for those natives. Yeah, that's what they call them, natives. I mean, that may be politically incorrect to call them that, but I mean, what, but I mean, what can you do? I mean, it's, it's, you know, I feel like, I, you know, I feel like people tend to get offended by just about everything. Yeah, be careful, okay. Oh, ho, 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 no. Not quite. That is not good. Okay, watch out for those natives. There we go. Watch out for those barbecuing hogs, from what it looks like. All right, and there we go. Got the gem. Now onto the next level. And this time, I am going to be playing as Crash's younger sister, Coco Bandicoot. She originally makes her debut in Crash Bandicoot 2. But here she's but here she's been added as a playable character. So I am going to be playing as her for the next level. All right, on to Native Fortress. Yeah, I know what kind of level this is. Dying a lot, keep an eye out for new checkpoints. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, wow. Like, who? Okay, seriously. Who has not figured that out at this point? Like, who even playing this game would would get this far and think, Oh, uh, wow. You're, oh, wow. I need to, I need to find a checkpoint? Wow, I did not know that. Oh, wow. I mean, it would have been a little bit more understandable if that, if that hint was shown at the very first level, but for it to show up at this point in the game is like, how stupid does Activision think we are? Yep, 
Yeah, checkpoint. That's a checkpoint. I mean, who? I would have never guessed that. But that was there, and that I have to. And then I have to hit the checkpoint to return back from where I would keep dying. Which, I mean, I've barely been dying so far. Yeah, so right now playing as Coco, and. I mean, she's okay. But I mean, I still prefer to play as Crash. Like she is, I mean, she, I mean, she's like kind of slower. Um, and also she doesn't really jump as high. I mean, she just like kind of feels like just a little bit of a weaker version of Crash, honestly. Yeah, I think in the next level, I'm just going to stick to playing as Crash. And then now for another TNT and more extra lives to boot. Be careful of those spike things. And that little monkey shit. Well, this isn't very many boxes. Not that I'm complaining. I mean, I got two lives from that. That's pretty good. And already I'm at 40 lives. I mean, one thing that I see people say on the internet is that the first Crash Bandicoot game is um, harder than the first two games, but... I don't know if I entirely agree with that. Like, I remember playing Crashes 2 and 3. I felt like those games were a little bit harder, were a bit harder than this one. And I feel like I keep dying at Crashes 2 and 3 than I have with the first one. I mean, maybe it's just the way I'm used to, but I don't know. And I think back there is where there is a shortcut. There isn't any boxes along the way, so, I mean, this is just a simple little shortcut that I can just breeze right through. Yeah, careful of this mucky shit. And that fire pit. Really be careful not to get burned by those fire pits. Oh yeah, and this is another level where I need a color gem. So this is gonna be a new level I'm gonna have to go back to. Anything back here? Um, okay, well at least it helps with um, proceeding past these fire pits a bit more, because otherwise I can get burned by one of them. And that would not be good. Then again, I have an Aku Aku mask, so, I mean, it wouldn't be too bad. Alright, and some extra lives. 47. I don't want to fall off. But I also gotta collect these boxes. Well, maybe it wouldn't matter too much, since I still would need to go back to this level anyway. Yeah, so that's a lot of boxes. But yeah, I'm gonna go back to playing as Crash. Sorry, Coco. You were nice and all, but... I still prefer to play as Crash. And now to go up the creek. Yeah, and this is... Failing a bonus round doesn't cost lives, so retry it. Yeah, okay, I mean, I knew that, but that's... But that's good to know. Anyway, so yeah, the this level is more of a continuation uh, upstream. Yeah, we have more of these Venus... These Venus fly traps. Oversized Venus fly traps, I should say. And 
and this one's especially one that you gotta watch out for. Oh, and hey, there's that monkey shit from that other level, the native fortress level. Inter interesting how these monkeys can go from go from the native fortress to this level. Like, that I feel like they don't even belong in this level. And more of that monkey. Don't get, don't get eaten. Well, that was close. All right, and I think this activates, I believe, some of the boxes from the back, if I remember correctly. Yeah, those boxes down there. Just activate that TNT, and then I'm good from there. Watch out for the fly trap. Oh, oh, careful. Okay. All right. Now onto the Batana bonus. Oh, whoa. Okay, well, that was interesting physics. I mean, I don't know if that glitch was in the original, or if they, or if it was in the original, maybe they just intentionally kept it in. I mean, if that was, if that was the case, then, I mean, it would've, I mean, it's, it's kind of a nice thing to still include. the gem for this level and now on to the next and I think depending on what the next level is I may end up saving the game and ending the let's play after this but let's see um what is the next level Oh, hey, Ripperoo. Yeah, so I think I'm going to battle Ripperoo, and once I defeat Ripperoo, then I am going to save. So yeah, direct attacks don't hurt him. I mean, that's probably easy to figure out. All right, this is one. Yep, with the big TNT. Don't get caught in the middle, and yeah, it's just Ripperoo bouncing in a bit of a pattern. Oh, watch out! Yeah, don't want to get hit by that. It's not good. Alright, so now... Whoa, careful! Yeah, so now, um, gotta really be sure to time these jumps. So that I can get Ripperoo with the big TNT. Ah, oh, just barely, barely missed. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right. Just one more left. Come on. All right. Now they get him with this big TNT. Okay, not quite. It's all about the timing. Come on. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Alright, just really need to... Will this work? Okay, I guess I'll try this big TNT. Okay, well, 
just bare well, just barely almost got hit. But hey, that worked. All right, so now that this level is completed, then after this, I am going to save and end this Let's Play. All right, and this next level is going to be the first in which I'll, in which I'm going to get the color gem. But now it's time to save and end the Let's Play. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for part two of the DSL Gaming Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy. Have a good one.